galaxy spin in a heavenly dance Oh God, all that you are is so overwhelming And I hear the sound of your voice All that I want is it's a gentle and thundering noise Oh God, all that you
Good morning. My name is Pastor Kellen Roganbuck. I'm the pastor of Emmanuel United Methodist Church here in Jefferson, Wisconsin. And each week we put together what you're watching right now, which is called New Church. New Church is an online, virtual, community-based worship experience. Now, to fully be a part of what we're doing here, you have to be part of the community experience. That's the community-based experience that we're providing. So the way that we do this from week to week is down in the comments section as, as part of a, a Facebook community. So I ask you, as I'm talking, if you could go down into the comments, introduce yourself, connect with people, maybe just share where you are watching New Church, since it could be anywhere. This is what the, the community-based piece means. And what it means is I'm giving you permission throughout this entire broadcast to be communicating through the comments, to be asking questions, to be answering questions that other people have, to be liking and, and commenting on other people's comments so that we can be building community even though we're in different places. As we prepare our hearts and minds for the worship piece of our worship experience, please join me wherever you are by raising your voice or maybe just sitting and listening and reflecting but as we come together with many voices in many places with one song to our one risen Lord. Please join me. Savior, I fell far from above. I've been down to the river. I ain't the same, a prodigal return. Prison. I've worn shackles and chains, but I've been freed and forgiven. I'm not going back, I'll never be the same. Oh, oh. One of the things we do as part of a worshiping community is that we pray for one another. Now we do this for two reasons, and we're going to explore these reasons more in depth uh, as part of our sermon today. But in short, we do it because we are in relationship with each other and we are in relationship with God. So at this time, I ask that you, down in the comments, share the things that are going on in your life that we can be praying about. First, what are the things that are going really well? What are the things that are are uplifting and, and creating joy in your life? Who are the people in your life that are touching you in such a way that they bring joy and, and goodness so that we can thank God for those people? What are the situations and the, the occurrences that are creating goodness in our community and how can we celebrate them? Now the other side of that coin is that there are things in our life that aren't going so well, that are causing anxiety or strife or hurt uh, or, or fear and we want to be praying for those things as well. We want to ask God to intercede with those things. So what are the things that you are afraid of? What are the things that are, are causing you pain or discomfort? Or in the community at large, um, creating chaos or fear or, or anxiety? What are the things that you want special attention on from God? Both of these things you can list down in the comments so that we can be praying these things together. Now, during this time of prayer, I will begin us with prayer. 
I will say uh, the beginning of our prayer, but then we'll have this nice time in the middle of stillness. And this, this moment of stillness is where you get to pray. Now you can pray out loud or you can pray in your heart, whatever's most comfortable for you. But I ask during this time that you highlight some of the things that you're reading down in the comments right now. The things in your life and in other people's lives that you can be lifting up to God. And then we want to make sure during this time of stillness, we leave time for God to speak back to us, whether it's uh, directly now or just into our lives later. After this time of stillness, I will bring us back into prayer and say some more words, and then we will pray the Lord's Prayer together. Now, the way I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer will be located on the screen. You can read along and say it exactly the way that I'm saying it. But if you learned it differently, I encourage you to, to pray the Lord's Prayer the way that you learned it, the way that you um, first heard it and, and first memorized it. That's the way that it's written on your heart, and that's the most authentic and genuine way to pray to God uh, is the way that it's written on your heart. So I encourage you to, to say it the way that you learned, even if it's different, I don't mind, and, and neither does God. Will you pray with me? <coughs> Holy Creator, we look to you today both with themes and messages of great joy, but also petitions and, and intercessions of, of hurting and sorrow and anxiety, and fear. We ask that in both of these things, in, in the good and the bad, in the happy and the sad, in the easy and, and effortless, and the hard and, and weighted, that you are with us, and that we feel your presence alongside us, that we feel your hands lifting us, your arms embracing us, and your face shining upon us. Now, we ask all of these things as your children, and we know that you are faithful to us, so we ask that in this moment that you hear our prayers. Grand Savior, you came and you pulled us out of this space of hurt and lost and brokenness. And you brought us back to the Father. You brought us to a place of reconciliation, to, to reconnect, to be together again with God. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your presence in our life and all that you are doing and all that you are leading us to do. We ask that you remain a presence and that you follow us all the days of our life, that you lead us all the days of our life, and that you take us to the place that God is intending. We ask all of these things using the prayer that you taught your disciples when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you have a joy or a concern that you would like prayed for, but you do not feel comfortable sharing in the, in the very public form of New Church, if you contact the church, we can pass this along to our prayer team. This is a group of individuals who uh, have set aside time to be praying for you, uh, as part of a community. So you can do this by contacting the church through our Facebook, through our website, through our email, uh, by calling. You can even contact me and we'll pass along that message. morning we continue our new sermon series, Conversations with God, that's all about prayer. Last week we talked about what prayer is and, and to really conceptualize talking to God just like we talk to anyone else. I, I even like to think of the, the imagery of 
talking to God on the phone. I'm not a big phone talker. Um, it's something that I've learned to be a lot better at in this time of COVID, where I'm, I'm not seeing my friends nearly as much, so we're talking a lot more on the phone. And so I actually like to think of this as what it takes for some of us to learn to pray. We have to, to learn to be more comfortable in this, in this instance, just the way I was having to learn to be more comfortable talking on the phone. So prayer is a conversation. It's that uh, connection, that's the, the con prefix of, of conversation, that's together. So you and God coming together to share in this prayer. That You say some things and then God speaks back to you in, in one of the many different ways that God can speak back to you. Now today I want to talk about the different types of prayers, or, or more specifically, the different things that we can pray for. Because uh, we get really settled into uh, the idea that we have to pray a certain way or say a certain thing, um, and that's just not true. There's, there's so many different reasons people pray, um, and, and I sort of lump them together into five categories, and so we're going to talk about each of those categories today, why they're important, why we do it, uh, and hopefully to, to encourage you to, to find words in each of these different ways to communicate with God. So no matter what you're thinking or feeling, there's something that you can be praying to God about. Um, so the, the first area that I'd like to talk about when it comes to prayer is praise. And this is lifting up God. This is saying, God, you're, you're fantastic, you're wonderful, you're good. Um, I, I created little... Uh, subsettings on my notes for each of these things and and so it says praise dash god's kind of a big deal so like that's what we're doing is we're, we're like letting god know that we are aware that he's kind of a big deal we are connecting with god in a way that that lets god know our affection for him um, this is this is part of what we do just in conversation right when we talk to someone that we love it's not out of character or out of the realm of possibility for us to say something like, you're wonderful, I miss you, you're great. These are, these are parts of conversation and they're parts of prayer. So for each of these different sections, for all five of them, uh, I've, I've pulled up an example from Psalms. The Psalms are songs, they were originally songs um, written, but they're, they're really wonderful as examples of prayer. So if you ever like really at a loss of what to pray, you can probably flip through the Psalms and get some ideas of what are some of the words, what are the things that other people have prayed for, um, and this is a way to get right. It's right in the middle of the Bible, so you just kind of go, boop, right in the middle, and there's Psalms. So this comes from uh, Psalm 30, and so I'm going to have it up on the screen. Each of these I'm going to have up on the screen so you don't have to go digging uh, because they're kind of all over Psalms. So this is from Psalm 30. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. First of all, what a delightful idea that, like, God's anger is momentary, but his love and compassion lasts for our lifetime, and that whatever our hardship now, um, joy will come in the morning. I love that. That's something I should read every night um, to remind myself tomorrow can be better and God is with me. But this is an example of uh, part of this prayer, acknowledging God and acknowledging the good things about God and, and lifting up God. It's what we do as part of worship. It's what we do um, in, in our lives and what we should be doing as part of our prayer. So praise is one of the things that we do in, in prayer. Another one is thanksgiving. This is uh, talking about the blessings that are all around us in our life. My, my heading for this one is blessings abound even when we are distracted. And I say it that way because uh, when we pray, we sort of tend to gravitate to the next section, which I should have done this section so I could have talked about this differently. Um, but we usually tend to, to focus on the petitions and the negatives. Uh, but we should really spend time talking about the things we're thankful for. You know, when, when I think of Thanksgiving, when you're sitting at the table and, and you go around and everybody says something they're thankful for, how often are we, are we thanking God for those blessings? Because that's blessings rain down from heaven. That's, that's 
I, I believe that good things come to us because we are um, in relationship with God. And, and so we, we thank God. We thank God for the people in our lives that are good and wonderful, um, the things that we are, uh, are glad for. Uh, maybe just thank you for the church. Thank you for Pastor Kellen. Thank you. You don't have to say that, but uh, thank you for my church family. Thank you for my job, for my house, for my kids, for my dog, for the sunshine on uh, an otherwise cold and dreary day. These are all things that we are thankful for. Um, and I think that the, the more minute um, that we get, the more uh, teeny tiny that we see our blessings, the happy we are as people. Things like, thank you for strawberries, because they're delicious. They're my favorite. Every time I eat a strawberry, I smile. Um, that's great. We should be thanking God for, for all sorts of things. Thank you, God, for uh, when I put this sweater on straight from the dryer and it just warmed my whole body. Thank you. Thank you for that sensation. That was, I'm so glad that I could feel and appreciate that. Uh, this example comes from Psalm 126. I'm going to have it up on the screen. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Praise and thanksgiving can often go hand in hand. Like, like in this one, we're talking about like the things that we love and uh, the, the joy that was felt by the, the author here. But, but they're also saying that like we feel that way because God's so great. Uh, so these can intertwine very easily. Uh, but when it comes down to it, it's, it's thanking God for all of the joy because that's what makes our life worth living is the joy and the love in our life and all love comes from God. So we have praise and thanksgiving. This third one is, I think, the most common, the one that we really seem to settle in most comfortably, and that's petition. Petition is asking God for something or to do something or to um, stop something or to start something. Uh, we do this oftentimes. You know, we call prayer, um, we say, what are the joys and concerns? And we almost always have more concerns than joys. Um, and, and partially because I don't think we've trained ourselves to see all of the blessings in our life. That was the last one. I think we should really focus more on Thanksgiving. But also, there's so many things in our life. Um, there are so many people in our life that are hurting. There, there are things that are going wrong. There's things that we worry about. And, and right now, the world is so anxiety-driven. That's where our mind can, can very easily go and dwell, um, which is okay. It's okay to ask God things or to complain to God about things or to ask for change. Prayer is only prayer if we bring everything to God, if we are transparent and open, because God knows our hearts anyways. This isn't my example, but Psalm 139 says that even before a word is on our tongue, God knows what we're going to say. So like God knows what we're bringing to him in prayer before we even say it. So like we need to be transparent. And that means even with the tough stuff, even with the things that are hard um, and, and confusing and difficult, the things that maybe anger us, you know, make us mad at God or confused by God um, or, or sad and feel distant from God. These are the things too, that, these are the hard conversations that we need to have. Um, so I'm not asking you to shy away from these things. Even though this is the thing that we do the most, continue to do it. And, and can continue to work to, to talk to God about all of the aspects of your life, even the hard stuff. Uh, the example comes from Psalm 38. Lord, do not forsake me. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly to help me, my Lord and my Savior. So in this example, the, uh, the author is, is feeling distant from God, is calling out to God for, for help, for aid, uh, for comfort, to feel like God is there. Now, um, again, this is one that, that seems to be uh, the thing more and more and more and more that we, we focus on. I want to make sure that our prayer life is balanced, but that doesn't mean eliminating your petitions or, or stopping uh, the, the communication, the, 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 the give and take, the, the raw, open part that is petition. 
saying, God, this is breaking me. This is tearing me up inside. And I need you to like be a part of this, to be with me, to, to help. That's okay to talk to God that way. Um, we just want to make sure that we are also spending time praising God and thanking God for the blessings in our life. Now, the next one is probably, I think, the most difficult, the most uncomfortable for a lot of people, um, and that's confession. So when we pray prayers of confession, we are bringing to God the things that we've done wrong. And who wants to do that, right? Who's ever comfortable being like, yeah, I'm, I'm bad. I made a mistake. Um, and, and we do this in such a way that we ask God's forgiveness uh, and we do something that's called repentance. You know, my, my, my subheading here was, oops, I did it again. Confession, oops, I did it again. Because we make mistakes. That's the nature of being human. We are a sinful creature. Um, so we come to God and we, we say, oops, I'm sorry. These are the things that I've done wrong. Uh, and then we, what we do is we repent, which means that we, um, depending on how you look at it, it, to repent means to turn. Um, some people like to say it means to turn away, to turn away from your sin. Um, I like to, to think more is that we're turning towards God. The two things are, are similar, right? Um, it's still a 180 degrees uh, away from, from sin. Uh, but I think if you think about turning towards God, uh, it puts the focus on God and, and not the focus on where the sin is, but where, where you're moving towards God. Uh, and I think that's a better way of thinking about it. Now, there's a couple things that you need to think about when you're thinking of prayers of confession. Um, and really, these are things to think about just with apologies in general. The first thing is that you can't confess and then say, but. Just like you can't say, I'm sorry, but. There's, uh, if you're seeking excuses, then you've not yet grappled with this mistake that you've made and you're not ready for forgiveness. You're not ready to ask for forgiveness because you're not yet fully grasping what you've done wrong. What this looks like is being like, I'm really sorry I'm late, but, you know, really, I, uh, you know, I got a, I got a call and, and well, and, and somebody was, uh, the person in front of me had their blinker on, but they weren't changing lanes. I didn't know what to do, so they're driving too slow. These are, these are trying to shift or deviate the blame from ourselves. Uh, and first, if we're doing that with God, it's just silly, because God knows the truth. God's the author of reality. Um, so <laughs> all we're doing is looking silly. Um, but the other is we can't fully turn away from our sin if we're trying to, you know, spread the responsibility of our sin off of ourselves. Like we need to name our sin and acknowledge our sin so that we can turn away or turn towards God and put our sin behind us. That's, that's really what is um, the fundamental piece of repentance is naming your sin, acknowledging it, and taking full credit for that sin. Um, that's something that I think that we struggle with because we have pride issues. We have um, uh, we don't we don't want to hurt people, and so it's it's really easy to to try to you know spread smooth out the responsibility. It's like yeah, we're I'm sorry I'm sorry I said that mean thing, but you know my blood sugar was low and um, I you know, was really upset because you had said some stuff and, and then the guy got me worked up. No. God, I'm sorry. It's my fault. I did these things. I lied. I was dishonest. I um, was hurtful. I did not love my neighbor. I put myself before them. Whatever you're confessing, you just say, this is me. I did this. I'm going to try to do it less. I'm going to try to, to not do it again. And when I do do it again, I'm going to apologize again and try to keep being better, better tomorrow than I was today. Our example comes from Psalm 38. For I am about to fall and my pain is ever with me. I confess my iniquity. I am troubled by my sin. The author nails it on the head here with the issue. Uh, our sin is troubling. I am troubled by my sin as you are likely troubled by yours. And so it's really hard to talk about. This is the kind of conversation we don't normally have with people. 
I don't call up uh, my, my friends and be like, yeah, man, it's doing really well. Uh, also, I'm really struggling with lying a lot. Or I'm, you know, I'm struggling with, um, with lust and, and like, uh, you know, I'm thinking about cheating on my wife or like anything. Any of these sins, we kind of bury those deep, deep down. Um, and, and when it comes to our prayer life, the intimacy that we should have with God, it needs to, to be um, at the place where we can confess our sin. It's really important. And so our last of, of our examples, we have prayer, thanksgiving, petition, and can confession. And the last one is intercessory. Uh, and and inter, intercessory, interceding, is when we are praying any of the previous, uh, probably not confession, you probably shouldn't be confessing for other people. That's between them and God. Um, but uh, praise, thanksgiving, and petition, when we're praying those things on behalf of someone else, we are um, praying intercessory prayer. Uh, and, and this is the kind of thing that we did earlier in this service and that we do every single week because community means praying for one another. Intercessory prayer is when we say things like, uh, Heavenly Father, my neighbor just found out that they have stage four pancreatic cancer. And it's really sweeping through the community and, and disturbing a lot of people. And I'm asking that you be present in this person's life. That you bring your hands of, of comfort and understanding and patience to them and their family and all who are touched by the. This is a prayer of intercession. I'm not praying for myself directly and praying for someone else. Um, and this is, this is really important. This is the, the community piece that we have to be a part of. Um, that we are created to be a part of. Um, Paul talks about us being parts of the same body, uh, but all different parts, and we work together to keep the body alive. That's what the church is. That's what our job is, is to be in community. You know, Adam and Eve. Adam was created, and God said, it is not good for you to be alone. We are not meant to be isolated, to be on our own. We're supposed to be in community, and that means being part of each other's life. Uh, and that means being part of uh, the, the prayer community. So uh, the example I have from this one is, is Psalm 128. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be on Israel. So the author here is, is praying for someone. In this instance, praying for someone right there. Somebody who's, who's present and saying, uh, may this be for you. Um, this is something that I do all the time when I meet with, with people and I pray for them. Um, uh, it's become a, a, a habit of mine that if somebody asks me for money um, on the street or something like that, I, I want to, to pray for them. And, and I ask, can I, can I pray for you? And, and so in that moment, I have an intercessory prayer. And, and of, oftentimes, an intercessory prayer of, of petition, asking God to, to be present in this person's life, um, and may, you know, blessings rain down, all of these things. Uh, so this is kind of the, the same as a lot of the stuff we've already talked about, but we do it for other people. So these are all different ways that we pray, and these are all different ways that we should all pray. We shouldn't, we shouldn't say, oh, I'm just, I'm really more of a petition guy, so I'm just going to take care of all the petition prayers. The rest of you can do that other stuff. No, we should be doing these things uh, all the time. This should be part of our, part of our uh, lexicon when it comes to prayer. It should be in our bag of tricks. And because we're supposed to be praying without ceasing, we're always supposed to be praying every single day uh, in every situation. We should be able to hit one of these things uh, every single time. So that leads me to what I'm going to ask you to do this week as part of this practice. Last week was all about examining your conversations and, and getting the, the understanding of the rhythm of a conversation and and start conceptualizing what prayer looks like with that same rhythm. This week, I, I want to amp it up a little bit, and I want to ask you to find time twice a day to pray. Maybe this is when you first wake up and you're right about to go to bed. Maybe this is as you're brushing your teeth, because you should brush your teeth probably several times a day, right? Um, when you are stopped at a stoplight, whatever it is, I want you to find time to pray two times each day between now and next Sunday. Um, and I want you to work on hitting all five types of these prayers. 
praise, thanksgiving, petition, confession, intercessory. Um, and now you might say, Pastor Kel, and that's five things, and you said two things. That's because we can do these multiple at once, right? You don't just call somebody to talk about one thing. Uh, when I call my sister to ask how my, my baby niece and nephew are doing, she then asks me some stuff, and then I ask her something else, and then she asks me some stuff, and then I say, oh, do you remember this? Uh, conversation is free form. There's no right or wrong way to do this. So it means like maybe you are you are got a prayer that hits praise, thanksgiving, and confession, or uh, petition and confession, or intercessory and thanksgiving. I want you to be very deliberate during this time to each day try to pray at least one thing from each of these categories. Praise God, you're a big deal. Thanksgiving, blessings are uh, all around us even when we're distracted. Petition, Prayer is only prayer when we ask God the hard stuff. Confession, oops, I did it again. Intercessory, community means praying for one another. These are all uh, crucial to our, our prayer life and uh, hopefully gives you some more ammunition when you're like, I just don't know what to say. Well, here's like all the different things that you can say. So with this in mind, as we leave this place of prayer, will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, you are so wonderful. Um, you have created us to be complex, delightful beings, and we thank you for all that's in our life, all the, the things that uh, we are thankful, the big and the small, the important and the seemingly uh, unimportant blessings in our life. We ask that you help us to be better at communication. We confess that oftentimes our discomfort stops us from talking to you like we're supposed to. And it stops us from doing what we are called to do, uh, which is to pray and to be in communication. And so we ask that you uh, smile upon this community and that you give us all the patience and comfort to reach out and do these things so that we may draw closer to you. And all God's children said, amen. Whenever we hear the word of God, we should be called to action. One action we take every time we get together is that we give to the community through the church. Now, our mission here at the Methodist Church is to make disciples for the transformation of the world. And what we are trying to transform the world into is the kingdom of God. We're trying to make each day a little bit closer to heaven on earth. And we do that through our vision here in, in Jefferson to meet people where they are, uh, to help them and experience the love of Jesus Christ in their life immediately. Um, and what that means is that we are reaching people through outreach and through mission to show them the gospel, what Jesus wants us to do. We are being the hands and the feet. And, and there's so many ways that we do that, and we can't do that without your manpower, your, your time and talents, uh, but also your financial support. This is how we pool all of our resources. Uh, that's why I give and we all give, is so that we can put our, our gifts together, and we can do more. We can reach more people. We can, we can find more goodness uh, to, to share. And so there's a couple ways you can do this immediately. First is you can get an envelope right now, throw a stamp on it, and you can mail support to uh, our bricks and mortar building. This is our address if that's something you want to do. Or you can head to our website, emmanueljefferson.com, and you can click on our giving tab. There you can follow directions and uh, actually do the same thing that you were about to do with a stamp and envelope, but you can do it online, so it's instant, it's easy, uh, you save the 50 cents of the stamp, and uh, you don't have to go to your mailbox, which is also nice, because it's so cold and knocky outside. So, I ask that you prayerfully consider how you can... Uh, maybe continue or increase, or maybe for the very first time, help be a part of what we are doing here, which is changing the world one person at a time. Let us once again use the gift of music to come together and worship our Lord. Whether you're singing or just listening and reflecting, please join me in this worship experience.
that is music. As we come to close of another episode of New Church, I want to ask a few things. First, if you are not a part of Ruby's Pantry, we just had a Ruby's Pantry a few days ago, and it was great. We're doing really wonderful things in the community, and you can come and be a part of that. You can come and volunteer. Uh, you can help direct traffic or put stuff in, in boxes or unpack pallets. There's many hands makes light work, and we are doing spectacular things that you could be a part of, and, and I invite you to do so. Another thing you can do right now is you can click the share button down below this video. At the very least, hit that thumbs up button so that um, this pops up on your feed and it, it invites people in your world to see what we're doing here and to maybe learn a little bit about prayer and about God in, in the mix. Another thing that I wanna share with you is that uh, we will be communicating more about this in the Next couple days, we'll be setting up event pages and you'll be receiving, receiving an email announcing this. But we are going to be reopening our in-person worship experience on Sunday mornings, starting on March 29th, which is Palm Sunday. So keep an eye on your emails. Uh, I think we're gonna send a letter home as well. It's gonna also be on Facebook. We're gonna try to spread this out so every person knows what our protocols are so that we can do this safely and securely for every person who's choosing to, to worship. But we will also maintain our online presence with New Church. So if you're not ready to be a part of our in-person worship experience, or you're living too far away, you know some of you are watching from out of state uh, or from clear across the country, and we welcome you, and I'm so glad you're a part of our community here. Know that for the time being, we're gonna be doing both of those things, and they're both gonna be happening at the same time, which is also very exciting. Jesus told his disciples to go now and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we do this as faithful disciples who are in relationship with other people and in relationship with God. And you can't do that without a vibrant, 
prayer life. We pray for other people and we pray to God. So go from this place, make disciples, pray for them, pray for yourself, pray for the world. Go and speak and be in relationship. Peace.